All right, so the next video is going to cover just section 6.3. I'm looking at apparent forces in circular motion, kind of like a net force, the net, a net force descriptions for circular motion. All right, so we talked about this before, the car going around the corner. Okay, the, the, the net force, the normal force goes in towards the center. All right. Now, you feel like you go in a straight line. Um, you might have felt this. If you go around a corner really fast, it feels like you fly to the outside. Okay. You feel this because your body wants to go straight out. Okay, your body's coming this way, and it wants to keep going in a straight line. The car is turning. So what happens is if you're allowed to go in a straight line, you actually run into the car as it goes around a corner. Okay. That's why it feels like you go to the outside. All right. Um, this feeling like you're going, you're going, you're being pushed to the outside is, is what's have been termed a centrifugal force, which is not, not really happening. There's not a force pulling you to the outside. It's just your inertia wanting to go in a straight line. Okay. So let's look at this. We're looking at the forces acting on, on a roller coaster ride like this. So you have a loop. Okay. So if you're sitting in the inner part, you're in this train and you go around this loop, okay, on the inside of the circle, okay, your tangential linear velocities are constant. But the forces are always going towards the center, but we have an interesting little thing when we look at the net force. Okay. At the top, the net, the normal force from the track is in the same direction as the weight. Okay. So you have a net force, your centripetal force, going in the circle, going towards the center. When you get at the bottom, your weight is going down. The normal force is still going up. So your net force is still going upward. So you can think of it this way. At the top, you have less, nor your normal force, the, the force on the, acting on the track, is less than it is at the bottom. Okay, because your net force, your centripetal force, if it's a perfect circle, is constant. Okay. Think of it in terms of those vectors over here. At the top, weight and normal force are going in the same direction. Because the normal force acts perpendicular to the surface that you're on. So they're going in the same direction. So you add them together to get your an equal net force to keep your centripetal force constant. At the bottom... That centripetal force value is still constant going up, but now your weight's going downward. So it's a subtraction problem. All right? So the force you feel, what's called your apparent weight, is the magnitude of the contact force that supports you. Okay? So that net force, all right, is great. So... At the bottom, you feel heavier than you do at the top. At the top, you feel like you're going to fall out. At the bottom, you feel heavier because you feel like you're being pushed. Okay, because this normal force, okay, this normal force is really your kind of feels like the apparent weight. All right, so so Newton's second law at the bottom of the circle. Okay, is your normal minus your weight. Okay, and because that's its centripetal force, it's mass times velocity squared over r. Okay, so the apparent weight, okay, apparent weight is going to be the normal, which is, so if you rearrange the normal force here, it's w plus your centripetal force. Okay, so at the bottom you appear great, your force appears greater than your actual weight. Because it's your weight plus your centripetal force gets you the normal force is what your what is what your apparent force is. Okay, at the top, they're going in the same direction. Okay, so now your net force, your apparent weight, is the addition of them. So normal plus weight is equal to your centripetal force. 
Okay, so your apparent weight then, this W, okay, excuse me, apparent weight, which is your applied by your normal, your apparent weight is your normal force. This time it's going to be your centripetal force minus your weight. Okay. So again, be able, you need to be able to derive these equations. Look at what's going on. Be able to put two equations together to answer a question. Okay. So as a car goes slower, there comes a point where the normal force is zero. Okay. So we can figure out the speed at which your normal, your apparent force is zero. That's called your critical speed. Okay, and that critical speed, like it says here, is the slowest speed at which a car can complete a circle. So basically your N is zero. Okay. Your normal force would be zero at that point. So it's just that your centripetal force is equal to the weight of the object. And if you rearrange that equation, you get that your velocity at that point would be the square root of G times R. Because then because the M's cancel. All right. So professional skaters have taken a skateboard through an inverted loop and a full pipe. For a typical pipe with a diameter of 14 feet, what's the minimum speed? Okay, so we can figure this out. All right, so we know that the weight of the object is constant. So what we also know, um, the minimum speed has to be enough where the normal force is zero. Okay, so going back to what we did in the previous problem mass times gravity is, so your your weight is equal to your centripetal force okay so in order for that to happen so the masses can cancel so then we're left with gravity times r and take the square root of that which is 4.6 meters per second okay so that's 2.1 meters okay so again when we did this we just used this equation, which came from this, where our normal force is zero. That's our minimum speed. Okay, that's the minimum speed that we have that we have to attain. Okay. Now there's these things called a centrifuge, and you can actually simulate this by like waving your arm in a vertical circle. Okay, but there's also this. If you look at this. Some medicines, and actually when they do blood tests, they spin it around, and your centripetal force is pushing in, and it lifts you up. It lifts up the object. Okay. Okay, so the, big, the, the, heavier, the heavier material goes to the outside because their, their inertia wants them, them to go outward. Okay. And you can actually do this in yourself to see what it feels like. All right, so we have this. We're going to look for the apparent weight of a sample with a mass of 0 0.003 kilograms. Okay, and we, we know that, that it has 18 centimeter diameter. Okay, so we know, also know the largest centripetal acceleration of 25, 250,000 Gs. Okay, so 250,000 times acceleration due to gravity. So to figure out acceleration, we got to take 9.8 times 250,000, which is 2.45 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So that's that's its centripetal acceleration. Okay, we can take we can do the radius. We know the diameter. Diameter radius is half the diameter. So there's your radius. Okay, go back to the earlier pieces. Okay, earlier earlier equations. Frequency is going to be 1 over 2 pi times the square root of A times R. Okay, because we, well, think about it, we know this goes from rearranging the F equals the, the centripetal force equation to get this. Okay, so that's the frequency of this, of, of this spinning object. Okay, working backwards and rearranging the equations. Okay, so if we know, we know that we go 830 revolutions per second. 
to find RPMs, which is multiplied by 60 to get revolutions per minute. Okay. So we know the acceleration. The acceleration was we, we determined up here. So because we know this centripetal acceleration, and we want to figure out the mass of that on a, on a little on a sample. Okay. So the parent weight is force times your, your centripetal force. Your mass times your centripetal acceleration gets you 7.4 times 10 to the third newtons. Okay. Now understand, if, if your radius changes, that's going to change your that's going to change a bunch of your variables here. Okay. And it seems about right because it's a because we have such a high acceleration to gravity, we're gonna have a, such a high weight increase. Okay. All right. So last question on this one. So car car of a mass of 1,500 kilograms goes over a hill at a speed of 20 meters per second. All right. So we have the radius. We want to figure out the force of gravity on the car, given our mass, and we want to figure out the normal force of the road on the car at this point, at the very top. Okay, so the force of gravity is just mass times acceleration to gravity. 1500 times 9.8 gets you your the force of gravity on the car at this point. That's your downward force. Okay. All right, so part B asks, what is the normal force of the road on the car at this point? Okay. So we know the weight. We know that gravity supplies 1,500 newtons of force. Okay, what we can figure out then is we need to figure out the centripetal force of the car. Okay, because if we know that if we know the centripetal force acting on the car, we can figure out the normal force which opposes the weight. Okay, because the car is sitting on top of the hill, the centripetal force is pulling in this way. Okay, normal force opposes it weight is going down as well. So the centripetal force is mass times speed squared divided by your radius. We were given our speed, okay, 20 meters per second. So 15 kilo, 1,500 kilograms times 20 meters per second squared divided by 60 meters, that's our radius, okay, will get us our, our, our net force of 10,000 newtons going towards the center. That's our centripetal force. Okay, so if it's a 10,000 Newton force going down, gravity is pulling down with 15,000 Newtons. That means that the normal force has to take away enough to get en enough of the gravitational force to get to the net, the, the net force of 10,000. So that means the normal force is pushing up at, fi at 5,000 Newtons. Okay. This, 50, this net, our net force is 10,000. Gravity is push, pulling down at 15,000. So if our net force is 10,000 newtons down, gravity exerts a force 15,000 newtons down. The normal force has to be exerting an opposite direction in order to drop it down to 10,000. So it has to exert a force of 5,000 newtons. And that's the end of the second video. Um, if you want to go back and look at the math problems for this one, and make sure you answer, answer the questions, and we'll talk to you in class.